Good morning. Does God follow through with his warnings? Today we're at Jeremiah 8, 13 to 17. I will surely consume them, says the Lord. No grape shall be on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter the fortified cities, and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God has put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and there was trouble. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones. For they have come and devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell in it. For behold, I will send serpents among you, vipers which cannot be charmed, and they shall bite you, says the Lord. Jeremiah continues to prophesy, and here he, he foresees the day when the invading armies from the north will come. It hasn't happened yet, but he's portraying that day. So verse 13 shows that the nation becomes shriveled. The grapes and the vines, they're all shriveled up. There isn't any real fruit here. And it goes on to portray in verse 15. Now here are the people locking themselves up into the cities. And some of them are maybe starting to think it looks like, uh, you know, we look for peace and no good came. They, it looks like they might be on the verge of starting to rethink. But of course, the trick is before the invading armies are surrounding your city and you're under siege and you're living off of rations and you're just barely getting through, it's better if you turn to God before that it's better if you begin to uh, be less stubborn before that. This people didn't do that. They just were just absolutely settled to go their own way. So anyway, Jeremiah shows this picture. There's a little bit of hope here because some, maybe when their city is surrounded and the invading armies are actually knocking on their doors and ready to end them, some of those people might finally be ready to relent and turn to God. At the end of time, I believe that the church suffers from similar tendencies. In fact, there's uh, seven churches, you know, in the book of Revelation, and if we, we know those are literal churches, but also if we think of them also potentially as, as meaning time periods, seven time periods for the church, the last one would be the seventh church, and that's the church in Revelation chapter 3, and there's an interesting warning there that I think pertains to those of us who live in this time. Revelation 3, here's the message that stands out, the message to the last church. You say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. God help us that that not be us. Help us to be able to see first and not have to wait until our armies are surrounding our cities and we're on the verge of being ended. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for watching over your people. Thank you that we can trust you. You have not forsaken us. You want us on your team. You want to do good for us but we tend to be very stubborn. Lord, help us not to be so slow and so stubborn. Lord, help us to be uh, listening to you, Lord, listening to your word, absorbing your word, being changed by it. Help us, instead of being self-sufficient, Lord, to learn that we need to trust in you. Please help us in these days, Lord. Help us not to be naked and blind and, and ridiculous and think we're rich when we need what you have and only you have for us in these last days. Help your people, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God help us to see our spiritual nudity and give us the clothing of righteousness from Jesus. God be with you today.